Hi, I'm Jessica from Gumroad. We sat down with Chris Gilbo to talk adventures, quests, and his new book, The Happiness of Pursuit, at the Cook House in San Francisco's North Beach neighborhood. We hope you enjoy. Creator Studio. Uh, my name is Jessica and I do creator success here at Gumroad. Uh, very briefly, for those of you who don't know, Gumroad is a di digital distribution platform uh, for creators like Chris uh, that sell their books, music, film, software, physical goods, and more. It is my great pleasure to introduce our guest this evening, Chris Gillibo. Chris is an entrepreneur, a traveler, and a New York Times bestselling author. Chris recently completed his goal of traveling to every country in the world by the age of 35. Chris also hosts the World Domination Summit each summer in Portland, which I have had the pleasure of attending this year and which several of our guests here tonight have also attended. It's an incredible gathering of people who want to do something remarkable with their lives. Chris's most recent book is The Happiness of Pursuit, which is about bringing meaning to your life by undertaking a quest. I was reading some of the reviews for The Happiness of Pursuit and saw more than one person use the word dangerous to describe it. Dangerous because your life as you know it, will never be the same. It will get into your head, make you want to start packing for adventure immediately. There's no return to normalcy. And so I hope you're ready to go there with me tonight. Please give a warm welcome to Chris. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks. I'm excited. So uh, I want to start back at the beginning okay. of your travels, um, your own quest to visit every country in the world. Uh, you have a chapter in your book called Defining Moments. Uh, so what was your own defining moment for this quest? I think for me it was more of a defining process. It wasn't like I had went to one country and then I was like, okay, I want to go to like every single one after that. It was more like, uh, for me, I loved travel. So I started traveling. And I lived overseas in West Africa for about four years. I went to maybe 15 countries or so as part of that. Um, and then I traveled a bit in Europe, went to like another 15 countries. And then uh, I was always a big list maker. I like to write, write things down. And so I wrote down a list of my countries. And then I was like, okay, I've got 30. Um, and I set a goal first um, to go to 100 countries, right? Um, and then I got a little bit closer to that and I was like, well, let me go to every single country in the world. So it wasn't so much like one moment as it was a process of gaining confidence. And I think, um, I think it's important to note that because a lot of people think you have to start with this huge vision. And you may not have the huge vision, you may not have the confidence, um, but if you work towards something that matters to you, like for me, travel mattered, goal setting mattered, you know, I put these things together and I was like, voila, there's a quest. Um, and the more I did it, the, the more excited I was about doing it more. Cool, cool. And you started a blog about your travels along the way. When did that start? Um, I started a blog in 2008 uh, and I'd been to about 70 countries at that point. Uh, so not quite halfway. Uh, but that was when I, I like formally established the quest, and I formally said, "Okay, I'm I am officially going to every country in the world by my 35th birthday, mm -hmm. and I'm going to document the process along the way, for better or worse. And uh, I'll share what happens. I'll share, you know, my observations, and hopefully, someone will care about this. Yeah. Maybe. And do you think that that's an integral part of doing a quest, the documentation process? I think some kind of documentation is good. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, I guess the question is whether it has to be public documentation, right? Because even before I had the blog, I was still like uh, making my list of countries. You know, I, I had my like Evernote file, uh, you know, Wikipedia, you know, number of countries, and I was like crossing it out. Um, so uh, once I started blogging, though, it was definitely a good thing. It was definitely really fun. It kind of changed the way I did a lot of different things. Um, so I don't necessarily think you must document, but it certainly was, was good for me. It was, it was very healthy for me. Yeah. So when did people start picking up on this? When did people start following along and taking interest in the blog? Well, my first reader was my grandma. <laughs> nice. And um, yeah, she was great. She was on AOL. And uh, her name was Yuna, so it was like Yuna147 at AOL.com. She awesome. subscribed. I'm like, yeah, that's great. Um, I think I had like five readers or something. And so she was one. And then I, then I realized, um, that she actually had created another AOL account 
you know? So she was like, you know, 147 and 148 at AOL.com. And I was like, great, like grandma's awesome, but now she's like 40% of my readership. You know, like I lost like 20% there. Um, so, I mean, people started reading right away, but it wasn't like a lot of people, I guess that's the point. You know, it was, it was people that I knew, you know? And then I started badgering people. I started badgering like people I'd gone to school with or people that I'd worked with overseas or, you know, I sent out like mass emails like you're not supposed to do. Um, but just to people that I knew, you know, and was like, hey, I started this thing and like, I would love for you to be a part of it. Uh, and a lot of people didn't care, but then some people did. And I kind of went from there. And so, and what was the call to action for them? Like just start reading along, start giving You know, opinions. it was really vague. You yeah. know, it was really super vague, you know, because it was just like, I'm doing this thing and I'd love for you, be, love for you to be a part of it. Um, come along, right? Yeah. So I didn't, you know, again, like I didn't really know a lot in the beginning. It was just like, I feel that there's something to this. Mm -hmm. And, I don't want to do it alone. I am an independent traveler. Like I'm going to every country by myself. Um, but I sense that there's something greater to this, uh, even if I don't necessarily know how to articulate it. Super great. Yeah. You know, so be a part of it somehow, right? And what was your first reader's reaction to what you were doing? Did they, did they think you were crazy? Uh, grandma kept reading. Nice. So that was good. I mean, she's still, she's still on the email list. and. And uh, hopefully she's not watching this because she th she's on the, 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 you know, the newsletter list. She thinks that every newsletter I write is being written like, personally Aww. to her, which is great. You know, I, get these I get these responses, you know, it's just, I'm like, great, yeah, thanks. Um, so what was, what, were, what was the question? What were people's response? Initial um, reaction, yeah, yeah to your story. I think, I think some people were super into it um, and some people didn't care. And that's common and that's normal, right? I think we often focus on this, this like polarizing question. They're like, oh, what about the haters? What about like people who are critical? I'm like, well, yeah, there's some of those really, but then there's like a whole lot of awesome people. But then I think the other dynamic is like, there's a lot of people who just don't care mm -hmm. and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think it's, it's certainly not my job. If you're creating something yourself, I don't necessarily think it's your job to win those people over. Mm -hmm. I think it's your job to figure out, okay, where are the people who actually will care? Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's your job to be a recruiter much more than an evangelist per se. Mm -hmm. So some people were inter interested in it and um, some people gave some really good feedback right from the beginning. Um, a really common thing was like, it's great that you're doing this, Chris. Um, how does this help anybody else, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, really good feedback. And so I learned to start thinking uh, maybe, maybe less about myself and more about like why people would care, you know? Like why do they read? the blog of someone who's going to every country in the world? Is it just because they love to travel? Like maybe that's interesting in some ways, maybe to a small group, um, but wouldn't it be so much more interesting, you know, if it was like, this is about a goal, this is about a quest, this is about process, this is about how you can achieve something and, and what will go well along the way and what might not go well and when something doesn't go well, then how do you react and respond? And, and so I guess over time, you know, like frustratingly, difficultly, I, I learned um, to kind of craft what I do more along those lines. Cool. So I wasn't a good travel writer. I wasn't good at like, yeah, I went to this amazing country. It was great. There were some awesome people. I, some, I ate some really good food. Like there's so many people who do that so much better than me. So I just stopped trying to do that. Cool, cool. Yeah, and people want to identify with something that's, uh, that's useful in their own lives. That's, that's cool. Um, so this quest has in large part come to define your identity. You know, you're the guy that's visited every country in the world. How do you deal with that? Has that been a good thing, a bad thing? Do you want to kind of move beyond that? Yeah, it was always like, um, here's this guy. Uh, we don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he's going to every country in the world. That was like my shtick, right? It's like Chris uh, somebody going to every country in the world. Um, I think identity and a goal is a complex thing. You know, I talk to a lot of different people who are pursuing their own quest, their own identity, and their own like passion or adventure. And they had also forged this identity. And it was, it was like kind of a bittersweet thing as you kind of come to the end of it or whatever. Um, but overall, I think it's highly, highly positive because it's like, yeah, okay, I spent 10 years going to every country, you know, finished that last year. And I don't want to live in the past. I don't want to be like the guy who's been to every country. You know, like you can do that for a little while, but I don't want to be like 10 years from now, like, yeah, that's what I did. You know, like I want to be doing more. Um, so someone said something to me the other night uh, I've been doing this book tour and going to all these different cities. Uh, and someone said, when I was talking about the loss of identity, um, they said, you know, you have to remember that um, this quest gave you that identity. So you're talking about like losing it, but actually you wouldn't have had this identity. And all these experiences that you've had, all these great people that you've interacted with, um, this new career, like this whole aspect of creating for a living, like it all came from that, mm -hmm. right? So I guess the point is like, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that identity. Yeah, yeah, totally. 
Do you have a next quest in mind? So the other night, um, someone was like, dude, um, you should go back to every country in reverse order. <laughs> and um, I was like, dude, you should do that. Like, that would be so awesome um, you know, for you to do that for your quest. Um, so I still love traveling. And I will keep traveling and writing and connecting and all that kind of stuff that I do. Um, but I don't think the next quest will be like the, the another travel kind of quest. Um, I want to, to focus on some different things.